Hello, welcome everybody. This is Dr. Bolad, board certified physician in cardiology, interventional cardiology, and internal medicine, certified by the American Board of Internal Medicine. If you are new to this channel, then definitely consider hitting the subscribe button below and switch on the notification bell so you don't miss any new videos that I post. For my subscribers, thank you for your continued support. Today, I will talk to you about cardiovascular disease risk factors. Cardiovascular disease is common in the general population worldwide, affecting the majority of adults past the age of 60. In 2012 and 2013, cardiovascular disease was estimated to result in 17.3 million deaths worldwide every year. The 2019 heart disease and stroke statistics update of the American Heart Association reported that 48% of persons 20 years of age and older in the United States have cardiovascular disease, which includes coronary heart disease, heart failure, stroke, and hypertension. The reported prevalence increases with age for both males and females. The lifetime risk of overall cardiovascular disease approaches 50% for persons aged 30 years. Autopsy data have documented that early onset of vascular disease beginning in the second and third decades of life. Many risk factors for cardiovascular disease are modifiable by specific preventative measures. In adults, the cardiovascular risk factors include family history. This is an independent risk factor for coronary heart disease, particularly among younger, younger individuals with family history of premature disease. There is general agreement that development of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease or death from cardiovascular disease in a first degree relative before the age of 55 in males and 65 in females denotes a significant family history. A wider definition of significant family history includes cardiovascular disease in a first degree relative of any age. High blood pressure, medically referred to as hypertension, is a well-established risk factor for adverse cardiovascular outcomes, including mortality from coronary heart disease and stroke. The lifetime risk for developing coronary heart disease is significantly higher among patients with hypertension. Although the current blood pressure at the time of risk assessment is typically used in most prediction scores, this does not accurately reflect an individual's past blood pressure experience it's important to include past blood pressure readings into the risk prediction, since the duration as well as the degree of hypertension are both risk factors. Lipids and lipoprotein levels are important risk factors. Lipids, principally cholesterol and triglycerides, are the water-insoluble compounds that require larger protein-containing complexes called lipoproteins to transport them in the blood. The protein components of the lipoproteins are known as apolipoproteins or apoproteins. The prevalence of dyslipidemia is increased in patients with premature coronary heart disease, being as high as 75 to 85% compared to approximately 40 to 58% in age matched controls without coronary heart disease. Disturbances in lipoprotein metabolism are often familial. Diabetes, including insulin resistance, hyperinsulinemia, and elevated blood glucose are associated with atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. Diabetes accounts for 10% of the population risk of first heart attack. The all-cause mortality risk associated with diabetes has been compared with the all-cause mortality risk associated with a prior heart attack. In addition to the importance of diabetes as a risk factor, Diabetes has a greater burden of other cardiovascular risk factors than non-diabetics, including hypertension, obesity, increased total to HDL cholesterol ratio, high triglycerides, and elevated plasma fibronegin. The coronary heart disease risk in diabetics varies widely with the intensity of these risk factors. Chronic kidney disease is another risk factor. The increased coronary heart disease risk in patients with end-stage disease has been well documented, but there is now clear evidence that mild to moderate kidney reduced function is also associated with a substantial increase in coronary heart disease risk. 
Practice Guidelines from the National Kidney Foundation and the American Heart Association Task Force recommended that chronic kidney disease can be considered as a coronary heart disease risk equivalent. Patients with chronic kidney disease who undergo stress testing have worse outcomes when compared with patients without chronic kidney disease. Lifestyle factors are very important. A variety of lifestyle factors impact the risk of cardiovascular disease. Cigarette smoking is a reversible risk factor for coronary heart disease. In 2016, approximately 15.5% of United States adults aged 18 years and older were smoking. The incidence of heart disease is increased six-fold in women and three-fold in men who smoke at least 20 cigarettes per day compared with subjects who never smoked. The risk of heart attack is proportional to tobacco consumption in both males and females and is higher in inhalers compared with non-inhalers. Aspects of diet that have been evaluated for coronary heart disease include the glycemic index, fruits and vegetables, meat, trans fatty acids and fiber diet. Foods with high glycemic index or glycemic load may contribute to the risk of coronary heart disease. Low consumption of fruits and vegetables is related to the risk of cardiovascular disease. High consumption of red meat has been associated with higher risks of cardiovascular disease. High consumption of trans fatty acids has been linked with adverse cardiovascular outcomes. Low consumption of fiber is related to risk of coronary heart disease. It is also associated with the development of cardiovascular risk factors including hypertension, diabetes, and elevated lipid profile. An important lifestyle factor is exercise. Exercise of even moderate degree has a protective effect against coronary heart disease and all-cause mortality. Exercise may have a variety of beneficial effects including elevation of serum HDL cholesterol, a reduction in blood pressure, less insulin resistance, and weight loss. In addition to the amount of exercise, the degree of cardiovascular fitness, a measure of physical activity as determined by the duration of exercise and maximal oxygen intake on the treadmill, is also associated with a reduction in coronary heart disease risk and overall cardiovascular mortality. Resistance training appears to have a beneficial effect on several risk factors for cardiovascular disease. These include lowering blood pressure, reducing fasting serum glucose concentration, improving insulin sensitivity, and dyslipidemia, decreasing waist circumference, and improving body composition. Alcohol intake is also a factor. Epidemiological data indicates that moderate alcohol intake has a protective effect on coronary heart disease. Obesity, defined as body mass index greater than 30, is a highly prevalent condition, particularly in developed countries, with estimates that 35% of population of the United States in 2011 to 2012 was obese. Obesity is associated with a number of risk factors for atherosclerosis, cardiovascular disease, and cardiovascular mortality, including hypertension, insulin resistance, and glucose intolerance, hypertriglyceridemia, reduce HDL to cholesterol ratio, and low levels of adiponectin. In addition to the associated risk factor of obesity, patients with more significant fluctuation in body weight, meaning cycles of weight gain and weight loss, appear to have an increased risk of future cardiovascular events. Psychological factors may contribute to early development of atherosclerosis as well as acute precipitation of myocardial infarction and sudden cardiac death. The link between psychological stress and atherosclerosis may be direct via damage of the endothelium and indirect via aggregation of traditional risk factors such as smoking, hypertension, and lipid metabolism. Depression, anger, stress, and other factors have been correlated with cardiovascular outcomes. Another risk factor is inflammation. Numerous markers of inflammation have been reported to be associated with increased risk of cardiovascular disease. 
C-reactive protein, abbreviated as CRP, is the most extensively studied marker of inflammation and the marker most widely used in clinical practice. Its precise role in the assessment of cardiovascular risk continues to evolve. A person's baseline level of inflammation, as assessed by the plasma concentration of CRP, predicts the long-term risk of first myocardial infarction, ischemic stroke, or peripheral vascular disease. Measurement of CRP levels improves cardiovascular risk stratification. HIV infection is a risk factor for the development of cardiovascular disease. The worldwide use of effective antiretroviral therapies in the treatment of human immunodeficiency virus, the HIV infection, has led to increased longevity exposing HIV-positive patients to many common medical conditions seen in an aging population, such as cardiovascular disease. HIV-positive patients have higher rates of cardiovascular heart disease and heart attacks compared with HIV-negative controls. Exposure to mediastinal and chest wall radiation during treatment of malignancies, for example, Hodgkin's lymphoma or breast cancer, has been linked to the subsequent development of cardiac disease, including pericardial disease, valvular disease, cardiomyopathy, and coronary heart disease, leading to anginal chest pain and heart attacks. The risk of cardiac disease may be further increased by treatment with systemic chemotherapy agents. Individuals with the metabolic syndrome have a markedly increased risk of coronary heart disease. Patients with a constellation of abdominal obesity, hypertension, diabetes, and dyslipidemia are considered to have metabolic syndrome, also called the insulin resistance syndrome or syndrome X. Microalbuminuria, as measured by urine testing, reflects kidney vascular damage and appears to be a marker of early artery disease. While microalbuminuria is accepted as an important risk factor for cardiovascular disease and early cardiovascular mortality, the mechanism by which microalbuminuria is associated with cardiovascular disease remains unclear. If you have any question about what I presented to you today, then subscribe to my channel and share your question in the comments section below and I will reply to you. If you have a question that you would not like to share in public, then follow me on Twitter at Dr. Bolad and then send me a private Twitter direct message and I will reply to you. If you found value in this video, then please like and share this video with family and friends. This is Dr. Bolad helping you with your heart health. Thanks for watching and talk to you soon.